Hey, I'm Siobhan and welcome to Phanalysis. In this episode, we're going to be showcasing a key example of how in pushback, teams can wrestle with the continuously changing long goal control zones and guarantee a win after autonomous. A great example that we're going to be breaking down is from the Foothill Robotics competition, where in finals you have the number one red alliance of 1698B and 11101B against the number two blue alliance of 2570R and 88909X. The Red Alliance has a sweeping win, taking all four of those control zones, but the Blue Alliance has various opportunities to swing the match in their favor, which we'll be seeing how you can take advantage of these opportunities. Make sure to pay attention to the long goals, as they'll be discord and rescored numerous times. Let's dive in and let us know your thoughts on Fun Analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options including game theme merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. So let's start off with autonomous. Team 11101B down here in the bottom right has a pretty interesting and simple but effective autonomous routine. All four teams sp spring out and go for those colored balls in the middle of the field. All of the teams also score in the long goal, but Team 11101B does a pretty interesting maneuver at the, at, at the end of autonomous, where they just simply shove these balls into the center of the long goal, which guarantees them that long goal control zone, uh, going into driver control. As you can see, it's pretty advantageous, advantageous to them because the top um, the top of the field is also owned uh, for their control zone for the red alliance. So they're able to start off uh, driver control, which in a pretty advantageous advantageous position, which pretty much requires them not to move at all. Although I'd be pretty worried about the top control zone or the top long goal because there is a little bit of room for the blue alliance to come in and score uh, some balls in there and guarantee that long goal control zone. But if I was 11101B, I would try and just sit where I am on that end of the long goal and just stay there so that way the Blue Alliance can't even score anything. I would be a little bit worried about the Blue Alliance and honestly if I was in the Blue Alliance's position, I would actually um, come around and de-score all of these balls that are in this long goal control zone. Because even though there are some blue balls in here, it's better to get rid of any of these balls in the red alliance, or sorry, in the control zone for the red alliance, because effectively this is a dead goal for the blue alliance, since there's uh, no valuable points scored in there. Um, so I would just score, de-score everything in this goal and try and give us, try and give the blue alliance a fighting chance, um, and try and rescore as many balls as possible, rather than trying to fight for a goal that's pretty much full and won't be as easy to um, score. Um, but you'll actually see a little bit of the opposite where the blue alliance actually comes over um, and tries to descore it from this end, which is not very effective because as I mentioned earlier, the red alliance 11101B can just sit at the end of the goal, um, which is really a lot, uh, gives them a lot of a stronger position compared to the wings that the blue alliance is trying to fight with. Um, and you can see that being demonstrated here where the red alliance is Literally just keeping that control zone simply by sitting here, even with the defense of the other blue alliance. So there's two blue alliances, uh, two blue alliance robots on this long goal control zone, and they're still not able to regain control because of how effective the autonomous was from 11101B and how simple their strategy is um, by just sitting around and waiting for that, um, waiting for the blue alliance to come and try and take it back. And now actually you see all four of these robots are actually on the bottom long goal and the blue uh, the red alliance descores those last remaining <laughs> blue alliance balls which is um honestly doesn't do much but it it guarantees that the red alliance won't have to put as much of uh, uh put as much effort into securing this long goal because there's basically no blue alliance balls that can be shoved back in and you're seeing that the blue alliance is trying to salvage that last ball instead of trying to score more um and here they they go for a couple more scores but the red alliance just sitting there it's it's really effective and honestly i believe the red alliance makes a little bit of a mistake later on in the match where they actually leave um the end of the long goal and they actually try and play defense on this blue alliance which is honestly completely unnecessary because they as we're seeing they have this control zone and they don't have to do much um 
honestly, they should just worry about the blue alliance, as I mentioned earlier, coming back and descoring all these balls. But that's a lot easier to defend from the position of staying just um, at the end of the goal, rather than uh, what you'll see here is the red alliance actually goes all the way to this end and kind of loses their position here, which... Luckily, it doesn't end up being too much of a problem, but the blue alliance actually can capitalize on this if, for um, for example, they had a couple more balls here. Um, but um, unfortunately for the blue alliance, they didn't have as many balls as they should have had to capitalize on this mistake from the red alliance. Um, and so the red alliance is able to go back to that position. Um, they, they still do make a couple mistakes and lose out on the position down here. Um, but it's honestly okay still because... Uh, they're, they're staying on the end and the red, the blue alliance has to score just that much more um, to even catch up to the red alliance. Um, and you'll notice that we're actually ignoring the top goal here because I want to try and isolate this bottom goal um, and just see exactly what's happening here because at the end of the match you'll actually notice that, a, that the red alliance has literally all four control zones. So I want to try and see what's happening on all these control zones and I want to try and see um, what each team can individually do. Um, so again, the Red Alliance keeps control of this this uh, bottom control zone, and I think actually at this point in the match, the Blue Alliance has an unfortunate uh, mechanical failure where their wing, which is a pretty vital uh, mechanism to this match, where they're using it to descore and re um, uh, push these balls, their colored balls, to the center of their goal. Um, their descore mechanism actually, I think it falls apart. Uh, actually, I think we might have missed it, but uh, let's go back here for a second. Um, you can see the 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 wing, the the standoffs on their wing. It actually falls apart, and you can see them. They fall on the field right here, which sucks for them because they're not able to perform the uh, perform the maneuvers that the rest of the robots, the all three of the other robots, are able to do on the on the field. So they actually resort to a little bit of a more offensive strategy. You'll see that they're they're trying to score more. Um, but the red alliance, I think they actually noticed that the the blue alliance had a mechanical failure, and so they're able to capitalize on that by just playing a lot of defense and making sure that they they just keep the the um the long goal control zone at the bottom of the field for their favor, and they uh they descore those last couple of blue balls, and there's not much the blue alliance can do besides scoring more. Um, the red alliance actually gets a, a little bit ambitious and goes for those those middle control zones, which we actually haven't talked about much in this match because they haven't been uh, very effective. Um, we've been mostly focusing on those long goal control zones. Um, and at the end of the match, we're going to see uh, the simple parking, which um, it really doesn't matter much because the Red Alliance has, as I mentioned earlier, they have this control zone, sorry, this control zone. They have the middle control zones, both the bottom and the the middle middle control zones um which we don't really need to talk about there's only one ball in there and there wasn't much a con of a contest for that but they also have a long goal control zone in the top which actually i want to go over as well so we isolated the bottom control zones but now let's er, sorry yeah we isolated the bottom long goal but now i actually want to go over the top long goal from start to finish of this match um so let's go back to autonomous we're going to see 1698 v in the top right of the field um, they have a pretty simple autonomous routine. Um, it's it's nothing special. They go straight for those uh, that middle middle uh, mi middle goal, and they get that control zone early on, and they also get that low goal, which I actually think is is constant throughout the match. Nothing changes with those balls, um, and they also get like I mentioned earlier that uh, long goal control zone. Um, but they're at a little bit more of a disadvantage compared to the bottom goal compared to the bottom goal because there's a lot more space in this uh, goal for the red or for the blue alliance to score um, so I think it's really important that the red alliance is able to guarantee and secure the uh, secure the control zone um, and if I was the blue alliance I would try and focus my efforts on the literally just scoring everything that I have in this um, control zone because if you notice there's only one two three four five balls in there and I think you need like seven six or six to eight balls in that long goal um, to guarantee um, a control zone so the blue line should be able to identify that and they should know that they can score around eight balls um, to be able to take back that control zone so um, like we talked about earlier the blue alliance doesn't do that they actually shift their um, their attention to that bottom control zone and we talked about earlier why that wasn't effective uh, and the red alliance is actually able to to just shift 
their um, attention onto that the um, bottom long goal. Um, however, they go back and try to play defense as the Blue Alliance comes back for that tough control zone, but the defense of Red Alliance is so effective, they just uh, scramble around the field and follow the Blue Alliance. Um, and there's not much to talk about here. It's, it's pretty simple uh, textbook defense. The Blue Alliance doesn't know, mu uh, know much of what to do because they can't simply use their wing here. There's literally no blue balls in there. Um, if they were to use their wing, they would be descoring all the red blocks, which would uh, take away some of the points from the Blue Alliance, but they don't have any points in any other aspects of the field, so it wouldn't do much. Um, at this point in the match, it would give them a bit of a chance, but um, the Blue Alliance is going to have to score some points. And they do that here, and they would need to uh, use their wing to force those balls into the control zone. And they actually do, which is really effective. But the, the Red Alliance um, notices that uh, the Blue Alliance um, cannot hold their wing here. So they wait for the Blue Alliance to, to, um, for those balls to be stationary in the goal, and they uh, sweep all those balls out of the long goal. So honestly, this game is starting to end up into whoever can utilize their wing more effectively and who can get those last second D scores in the match. And we still have 45 seconds, so um, there's not many balls in this long goal control zone, but there is still some for the Red Alliance, which um, it, it gets D scored and again, it gets rescored. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, it's just it's just a constant of rescoring, uh, sorry, descoring and rescoring. Um, and it's honestly um, a funny thing to watch. And, um, and as soon as you see that red alliance starts to match load, you know they're about to rescore some of those balls. But the blue alliance knows that they have this control zone, so they're going to try and get on the defense now, which is a big contrast of the red alliance, um, who was originally on the defense, or sorry, on the offense. Um, sorry, yeah, no, they were on the defense at the beginning of the match, knowing that they had those control zones. Um, so it's honestly a little bit confusing. Um, the Red Alliance finally gets that last uh, swing of the match, getting that, I think it's only one ball for their alliance in that control zone, and they park. Um, so it's a very confusing match. I think it's, it's, it's a good example of how teams can utilize their wings and how important those wings are getting. Um, it's also a really good example of how driver control, sorry, autonomous control, um, autonomous period can set you up for driver control and how important the driver reaction time is for the wing conditions of the match. Um, being able to utilize those wings, the wings and understand when you need to utilize those wings versus just staying on the ends of the goals um, is really important. And I think 110. One, sorry, one 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 zero one B is actually able to understand that strategy pretty effectively. They make some mistakes, but they're able to recover from it um, almost immediately. And I think that's going to be key for this game. Um, I think there's opportunity to make mistakes, but um, capitalizing on your opponent's mistakes and understanding where you can um, rectify your mistakes, that's where the important wins are going to be. So um, the parks were pretty useless i mean they balance out i think the double parks um will be kind of important in the matches where uh you're gonna have to make a clutch at the end but um the parts and even the middle the middle control zones aren't too important so so i think just focusing on these long control zones even autonomous it's just so important and it's really vital to how these matches are going to end up so i think if this match is a really good example of what you can learn and how you can effectively outdrive your opponent using your wing and using simple scoring techniques just by understanding simple strategy and knowing how the outcome of the match should look if you want to win. We saw a lot of swings in the long goal control zones with a lot of descores and rescores. The blue alliance actually had a lead for a brief amount of time, but the red alliance ended up carrying on their lead from autonomous and resulted in their victory. Let us know how, as the Blue Alliance, you would have won this match, or as the Red Alliance, you would have kept your lead. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Fun for more robotics-related content. I'm Siobhan, and thank you so much for watching Phenalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information.